kind of challenge which is going to be a lot of fun. As you can see behind me, we're all dealing with design trends. Okay, this one might veer a little bit off because basically we're going to be focusing on blur and grain. Um, but it's this whole idea of adding texture to uh, Illustrator, like any Illustrator illustration, whatever you're doing. Because um, that like organic look is uh, a design trend. So good to have you here, Afroja and Beatrice and Chris and Daria and Gabriella. Yes, and now you know why I always wear black shirts, so you don't notice this huge microphone right in front of me. But hopefully I'm sounding okay, and uh, it's not uh, flashing too much or anything like that. But I'm glad you guys are here, and uh, let's get this party started, huh? Shall we? All right, hello. Okay, let's do this. All right, welcome. And if you're joining me from elsewhere, it's good to see you. Uh, ben and Andre, um, cool, from Iceland. Yes, Viola, so this is really good. We're gonna go ahead and open up our file. We're gonna get started just so you know. If you are joining me so for your first time or even if you've been here before, that's okay uh, because I want you to uh, always like return. <laughs> but in general, this is the link we are going to right here. All right. Uh, yes, it's like, by the way, I promise to go slower. Okay, Space Kitten. Um, but welcome everybody. I just posted to chat and oh, I'm so sorry about that keying. Um, but uh, we will tackle, um, there we go. Boom, there we are. Um, kind of dealing with blurs and grains and we can see from this page as we scroll down, you can go ahead and grab the source file. So get started. It's, it's really nothing too crazy in here, just to be honest with you. Uh, and you're watching the video now. So uh, let's dive into that. So again, we're gonna get started just by opening up that file, right? We can see it right in here. And again, nothing too spectacular, but we're gonna make it spectacular. So hopefully that works for you. Sarah from Sweden, awesome. Tony Howard, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Awesome. So let's, let's dive into this right now. Um, I'll just kind of switch this over to sort of the default colors. And you can see up here on the top, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna blend together shapes and textures using gradients and filters, right? And you can see just kind of some simple examples. And uh, we'll get into this uh, sort of halftone effect too, which is really cool. All right. We'll just take a rectangle, we'll just draw it out. We'll just kind of create our background first off like so we will open up the swatches panel um yes the new repeat filter is awesome that i showed yesterday i think it is really cool and again it's brand new so right in here have that selected i've opened up my swatches panel and if you have this file uh you have all these wonderful swatches that you can go in and select sort of any of these just standard uh, fill color swatches or gradients as well. I like doing these fun gradients right in here, like so, that we can play with, okay? Uh, if we take a look, oh yeah, it makes it so much easier. Again, just so you know we're talking about really fast, uh, this repeat feature, let's go ahead and drag out this sphere as you can see it right now, and let's just make that like so, this is what we're talking about. Object, uh, excuse me, repeat, it's right down here. Okay, repeat and then radial, right? And now we have this wonderful pattern. Uh, you guys get the idea. And that's brand new and you could do a grid, you could also do a mirror. Okay, so that's what's going on. But I wanna deal with this right now because not only have we added a gradient, it's a linear gradient, if we open up our gradient panel, I usually always have mine open. It's usually next to color. Uh, we can go ahead and change the gradient from linear to radial. Bam, just like that. So we go boom, boom. You guys get the idea. Gus Martin's in the house. Welcome, buddy. Awesome. Good to have you here, man. I always like, you always make me smile. It's always good seeing you and I miss you, my friend. Uh, right in here, this is what I want to show because this is fairly new, uh, but it's kind of hidden if you don't know about it, but freeform gradient. So right now we're playing with colors before we play with texture, just so you know. We need color, we need something there before we apply texture to it. 
Arwes, good to have you. So I'll go right up here. I'll just click Edit Gradient. I'm going to make this a freeform gradient. I'll just boom put a little color stop right up here and I'll double click and I can go ahead and change that to our pink that uh, for some reason I always like, right? We'll change that over here. We'll change this to a yellow and we can see these different color stops that we can add wherever we want. Okay, we'll drop in a purple down here or even a blue, right? And you can see it kind of do this wonderful transition, right? And we can move these around and see that how this interacts. Right, so this is kind of how you get the cool desktop background type colors. Yes, Michelle, I love freeform gradients. By the way, Michelle and Jack, it's good to have you here. Awesome, so glad to see you guys. Uh, there used to be this mesh, and there is this mesh tool that you can use, and that was kind of like the old way of doing things. It still works, it's very exact, but boy, was it a nightmare, right? And that's why I love just saying, hey, you know, I wanna put a color down here, let's put a color down there. Hey, you know what, I'm gonna make it green, let's make it green, right? It's almost, almost make it too easy, okay? Cool. The crew's in the house. Good to see you guys. It's nice that I can always edit this. This is an RGB file, these are RGB colors. Uh, if I decide I want, uh, say for instance, this yellow to be more dominant or less dominant, I can just drag that out and this increases or decreases the intensity of that yellow. I'm not crazy about this green, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, hey, you wanna remove a color? Just hit delete. Freeform gradients in Photoshop, also they are not. Um, let me think about that. You would just you would just paint with a brush. That's what you'd do in Photoshop. You just paint with a brush. You would just paint these colors on. But this is why I love illustrators like this this controllability. Because really, what I'd have to do is I'd have to work really hard to get these beautiful blends of colors together. If I wanted to do that in Photoshop, so let's jump out. Let's just grab a circle, right? An ellipse. Here's our wonderful ellipse. I draw that out, you can see it, it keeps all those settings. Yes, Michelle, don't worry about the gradient mesh tool because it will scare you, right? So this is cool, it keeps it. Now keep in mind, let's, let's be totally honest, right? Uh, I could save these other gradients, but if I take, say for instance, this fill color, which happens to be a freeform gradient, I'm actually not able to save it to the library. And that is kind of disappointing, but I don't really know how that'd work out anyways. Uh, so just keep in mind, radials, linears can be saved in here, uh, and then you go from there. Okay, so let's just do something kind of cool, because I wanted to do something kind of like this. I wanted to do, let's see if I could dig it up real fast. And actually it's off to the side. I guess I could just look at it over here. I kind of want to do something like we have right over here, blending all this stuff together. But I like blending two colors together as well. So I'll take this, I'm gonna create a second version, hold down the option and shift and drag up, right? Maybe throw another gradient in there. Maybe I decide I want this to use the freeform gradient, click like so, and I can start to add my own freeform right in here. And the reason I'm doing that, and let's move this down here, let's be aware of where the light is coming from. Right, we can do something kind of like that. Um, and you know, what I can also do is I can add lines to this because maybe I want it to follow along a curve, just a bunch of those color stops. Oh, so sorry about that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm zooming in more ways than one. Let's get back in there, Paul. Okay, so let's get back in there. So um, by the way, how do you get back in there? You could always select the gradient tool or just select the object and click right up here. Cause these little dots will go away and you'll wonder what happened, right? So I'll just go in here, I'll delete that one. Don't want that one. I'll delete this one here, right? Go in here, select this one, change this to lines. So now I can have lines from here to here to here and we can follow along that curve to get that nice, nice sort of like bounce light in this case, right? We could switch back to points, add a point right there in the center, change that to another color, you guys get the idea. All right, we're just having fun making colors because it doesn't have to be complex to be cool. I'm a firm believer in that. Now, 
haven't even gotten into the colors and the blurs and all that stuff. We could save these. I often, ha how many of you do your artboards look like this? Like you'll have this and then you'll have another version off to the side. Do you end up creating all these different versions? I typically do, right? Uh, Robin, to answer your question, how do you change the colors individually? Just go back, you can click the gradient tool or just go to the gradient panel. And really it's just a matter of uh, showing that color stop and then clicking and then if you double click, you can access those colors. Okay. So who's, me yeah, okay. Um Umicorn, you have a messy desktop like me. This is what I usually do. I'll go in and I'll hide artboards. Right, just get rid of them entirely. Now I have this beautiful white space I can work with. Okay, so here's where we started. Here's where we're going with this next one. Select this, and I'm just gonna do a cool blur. Uh, crazy messy art boards, for sure. Uh, let's go down into blur and let's just add a Gaussian blur to this. Adding a Gaussian blur that's pretty high. This was mine, because that's what I used last, is up to like 75 pixels. Depends on your page size. But we can see that lovely blur that we've added. Well, let's go down here for this one. We'll go into effect, we'll go into Gaussian blur again, and we can see that nice blur. And we can crank this up. So I'll crank this up to 90, right? It's gonna blur it out even more. Um, you can kind of see it blend in with the color behind it as well and we start to get these interesting shapes i think how do you copy the artboard uh you do a command c command v or just option hold down the option key or alt key and drag so if i decide i want a third sphere an option key and drag and i've duplicated but you asked specifically how do you uh did you say how do you copy the artboard you could literally use the artboard tool bam and then you can do a copy and then paste. Oh, I had contents locked, but that's typically how you do it. Artboards are just a shape. So, yes, exactly. Martha, thank you for, for bringing that up. Sometimes you will select a um, uh, the freeform gradient and then it will just give you some wacky colors or maybe just all white. Okay, don't worry too much about that. It's just saying, hey, it's your turn to actually add those color stops, right? So this is already looking cooler. I'm into it. Yes, this is very Lisa Frank. It's interesting, at least for me, I've kind of been getting into color lately and um, I, really, uh, I really have been enjoying these bright color palettes, okay? So here's version two, we'll drag this over. How am I copying this? I'm holding down the option key or the alt key on PC and then the shift key to constrain it. And boom, there we have it. And we can play with these sizes as well. Right, just to get some really fun, interesting shapes and to get this to interact. Now I'm not done with these yet because I can get them to interact even more. Okay, so we have this blur. Um, I'm thinking, ooh, I'd really like this to interact with the colors around it. So let's go to right up here, zoop. Opacity, well, I don't wanna just change the opacity. That would be lame, because it just muddies it. But we can click right here on the underlined word opacity and we could change the blend mode, okay? Tony Howard, uh, yes, Tony, if you want blue in the middle, you can totally do that, you just click right in the center and then change the color and it, and it should do it. So you can see what happens there. I've changed it to overlay. I can change it to lighten and it's just gonna take those light colors and not the dark colors. Uh, or I can change it to darker and it's just gonna, of course, get rid of the light colors. But feel free to play with that if you want to. I don't know if I'm really getting like the best sort of special effects this way. Um, Ah, oh, Space Kitten, I love playing with blend notes. And Space Kitten, I really want to know your real name. I want to know, like, what's on your birth certificate? Does it really say Space Kitten? Tell me. Uh, here's another little trick. If I wanted to make this look like a planet with an atmosphere, I can take the blur down. Actually, let's copy this first. Zoop. Oh, sorry about that. Notifications. Uh, we could have this first one, maybe remove the Gaussian blur from this first one. And this one right here, this one could be the atmosphere, in which case we'll change this to overlay, 
Okay, and then we'll move it back on top. And now we've kind of created a, a and let me make it a little bit bigger. We're tra we're basically kind of making a an atmosphere for uh, this this planet, if you will. Okay, and again, I just changed this to overlay. Maybe it needs to be something else, but you guys get the idea. And let's make sure it's on top of everything else. There we go. Anyways, that is all right. Okay, we're just having fun. I don't know why I'm making planets. Let's add some textures to it. Actually, a, a new design trend, and I've talked about this a couple weeks ago, is um, uh, sort of like a retro sci-fi look. So that's what I'm kind of into right now. I want to give this kind of a retro sci-fi look. All right, so we do that by doing this a couple different ways. We can go to effect. We can go to um, effect gallery. This is one way of doing things. And this effect gallery you might notice from, uh, say for instance, Photoshop looks very similar. Okay, and you can see what it's doing with this default one that I have selected. But this is where you can get some nice textures as I just start clicking around. We have film grain that starts to add that film grain and do some weird stuff, right? I typically don't like to um, add my textures this way. I typically do a separate layer on top of everything else. So we'll just grab a rectangle tool. We'll throw it new shape right here it is okay you ready for this this is a this is a big question that i'm going to leave you or like kind of give to you guys i want to see who answers ayub good to see you from morocco but okay so wade steve uh rick h why did i just draw out this new shape and it automatically has all those same settings why does it do that Okay, because that's how I have this file set up. And it's actually, I'm really into it, by the way. I just absolutely love it. <laughs> All right, so let's just, let's just kind of get rid of this stuff. I want to just see if, if anybody knows the answer. Meanwhile, I'm just going to make this gray. We'll go into effects. We're going to stylize, or excuse me, go into effects gallery, throw some texture on top. Like we want this lovely line art, ah, it's okay. We have, again, this is why I made it gray because it's gonna work differently. We have this note paper, we have this reticulation that I can actually increase the density of and uh, start to get those that texture that I like. Let's click okay. Let's do that and see what happens. Thank you, Richard wins. I knew Richard would win. Richard, you are correct because Right in here, by the way, let's just kind of move this over. If I draw out another shape, it gives me all those settings. It's because in the appearance panel right down here, uh, this is unchecked. So new art doesn't have basic appearance. Pick up your last used settings and apply them to anything new that's created. That could be great or it could be annoying depending on what you're going for. But you want to do, maybe you could change that. Just new art has basic appearance. You check that. And what you can also do is take that shape and let's zoom out. Uh, reduce to basic appearance. Boop. Oh, now we've gotten rid of all that effects and the, all that stuff. And it's now just a lovely circle. Okay, back to this texture. Good call, Richard. Taking this, bring it to the top, changing the opacity, excuse me, not the opacity, but I can go with, say, the grain. So we'll change this to, say, lighten, for instance. That's typically what I do, by the way, and that way I don't have the effect on everything because as soon as you get into these effects, look, my, my little uh, sp spinning wheel starts to kick in, right? Every time I move something, the spinning wheel kicks in because that's what happens when you add lots of effects. But if you can add that and have this lovely texture right on top of everything else and then just turn it off when you don't need it, that's what I would do. Just turn it off when you don't need it. Let's do one more one more cool effect, by the way. Let's take a couple of these spheres and I feel like doing a third version. Let's see what I can get done in time. Yes, I have five minutes. Let's take these. Let's bring them over here. Yeah.
Yeah, right, Steve, you are funny. You're a funny guy. I really need to increase this texture like a lot, by the way, but you do see that it's there. I encourage you to post what you, your, your favorite uh, as well. So let's go in here, let's select this shape that we had again. Now let's do something really fun because I love creating these textures. Let's go into pixelate and let's create some lovely pixelated tones. We'll go to color half tone for that shape that I have selected, right? And it's gonna take that shape. I know this shape is pretty large, so I'm gonna increase this by 20. And I'm not gonna mess with any of these channels, but it's gonna give this color halftone look. I forget what it's called. Moray, uh, Ben, 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 I don't, I forget. I know, I know Tim. If Tim Mo Mobius was here, he'd be able to tell me. Anyways, we'll increase that to 20, we'll click OK. Right, and now we get this lovely like moray pattern, which is really cool. Okay. There we have it. I could add that real fast. Let me just double check this. All right. So yeah, uh, I'm really into this look. So I could go ahead and do that for these others, right? If I go up to effect, apply color halftone, you'll get to know these shortcuts, but I'm just like really into this look, right? Taking this one, we'll go in effect, color halftone. And then by this time, you realize that there's a shortcut key. So as we go up here, we'll go to effect, uh, shift command E, right? And now we have those three applied. Let's do it to the background. This is gonna be a big one, you ready for this? Apply color halftone. That alone is actually really cool. I love how it's kind of uh, sort of like coming coming out of that uh, smooth texture. So personally for me, I uh, hope this works for you, but I actually like it kind of without. I like it like this. I like this texture. Look at that. Isn't that nice? It's just so pretty. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's mezzotint. I think mezzotints are more of the squares. It's, it's a guy's name, his name is Ben something. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of in this retro futuristic bright colors uh, and you can see all the different versions that we have made right in here. And let me just do one more thing and get rid of these. I did share these samples with you. In fact, look what I did. Oh, guess what? You unlock that bottom layer. Don't do this, but you could actually even cheat or at least explore these. Uh, well, maybe not actually. I, I, I didn't, I kind of didn't want to do this, but I, it looks like I've rasterized these so the file would be smaller and that you wouldn't just take those and redo them. But anyways, hopefully that was okay. That's all I have for you guys. Make a cool, uh, he's like inter, an interstellar snowman or electric Kool-Aid, <laughs> right? That's what I have. This is like my interstellar snowman. It's like, bup, bup, there's his head, right? And I can have some fun with it. You guys get the idea. Throw some eyes in there, make it really fun. But also don't forget, remember what we made yesterday. Now thinking about what we made yesterday and how we can incorporate these, this color, right? All this fun stuff with these tones. Feel free to think about that and the magic that you can create because I know you guys got a lot of magic in you. So I'm into it. You guys get the idea. I'm not saying this is the best color scheme. I realize it is not. Okay. Done and done. That was from yesterday. That's what I have for you guys. I appreciate you. So again, try it out with some of these because I ultimately kind of wanted to color the hand and bring it in here or maybe make it flat or something. I don't know. Uh, but once you're done, keep in mind, just turn on the... Uh, show art boards. Let's do uh, Shift F and uh, post whichever one you want. Just go ahead and export and then put it in. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Export it out and then post it to Discord. Uh, yeah, and more coming later as I work on other things too. It's going to be magical. 
I appreciate you guys, and uh, we won't worry about me revealing my desktop and all my secrets. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Andreas, Steve, Bruce, and everyone. Ayub. Uh, yeah, be kind to one another. Stick around. We've got a cool day planned for you. Big thank you to Farah and Anna, who were just up. Um, but also we have, uh, uh, yeah, Corey Hall back from day two. So this is going to be good. Into it. See you tomorrow, everyone. Have a beautiful day. And uh, we will see you all soon thanks so much yes prayer hands see you guys <laughs>